Last time on Dragon Ball Z. Two hours ago, uh, ContraPoints blocked me on Twitter. You know, I really wish people would pay less attention to the tweets I spend 30 seconds writing and a little more attention to the videos that I spend, you know, hundreds of hours making. And performative activism is all about that. It's about being invested in how it makes you look and not actually being invested in the cause. I'm okay with being criticized for the ironic misogyny, but the way in which the criticism took place made it feel like the left was kind of implicitly ceding ground to J.K. Rowling by agreeing with her and that my behavior sort of warranted her general denunciation of trans people. And that, I think, is a problem. I was getting dragged, and I made the poor decision to try to solve the tweet problem with more tweeting, which 100% of the time is like trying to put out a fire with lighter fluid. So recently I got into a little bit of personal fight with a friend and one of the claims that was made against me was that it was said that I have been going after trans women a lot lately and this is just demonstrably not true. If you look through the course of our channel, we've discussed trans misogyny, we've discussed the ways in which various trans women have been targeted unnecessarily. We've also gone against trans women in the past without any way necessarily talking about their transness or in any way making that a particular point of it. Lily's a good example of this. Lily sucks as a person, but it's not because she's trans. I'm trans. The reality is, is that like this claim is nonsensical and it's often thrown out by people who, in my opinion, either because of the philosophy tube video or various other things, seem to want to do a sort of like thought terminating cliche of claiming that we're doing something that we're not when they don't want to actually deal with substantive critique. So with all of that said. Well, it's also weird, like infantilizing too, of like, wait, can't criticize somebody because they're trans. You ruined my joke. I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Hello darkness, my old friend I've come to talk with you again <laughs> Marcy Mark, thank you so much for the tier one sub. What I was going to say before ZZ did that was Now let's talk about a trans- let's go after a trans woman Um, damn it <laughs> Anyway, it's oh, a- Oh, but I, I didn't ruin that part You still could have said it You still could have said it, I was just- at The inner- uh, Oh no The timing was all off uh, Do we need to restart? Like- no, you're fine it's fine. It's good. It's fine. We'll leave it. Leave it in. Go it live. Make a little short splicing stuff together. Be no. like, this is what we meant to happen. Amazing. Um, anyway, let's get started with this nonsense. So as you guys know, ContraPoints recently put out a video about uh, the Twitch trials of J.K. Rowling, where she makes basically connections between Anita Bryant and J.K. Rowling talking about hated women that were treated like they're the devil. The video is all right. It's not the worst thing in the world. Um, I think her thesis at the end, her overall summation co- conclusion is kind of shit. Um, and I do think that her bizarre tangent into going after a year old drama is beneath her, if I'm really honest. Um, I've seen a lot of people trying to defend this video because a lot of people dislike Vosh. And I'm not coming out swinging because I happen to like Vosh. I actually really like Contra and Vosh a lot, but this is not appropriate. So we're going to go through the ch- one of her chunks of her video. We're also going to look at the thesis. We're going to look at some tweets because I genuinely think that this is kind of an issue. Like there is something going on with essayists where they I don't know if it's Vosh just getting like just triggers people or what, but all of them are losing their minds. Um, That's yeah. The the best thing I can. Yeah, there may be a larger video on this at some point, but let me give you a a little side tangent real quick. Back when I was doing gestalt therapy in a group, one of the things my teacher Cherie told me was that she referred to me as this is the affection term for it. Grinder. What she would notice was is that any time this is back when I presented mail, that when I was in group, a lot of people who had trauma around various, you know, things around men would often project that onto me and then have a big freak out during the group sessions, even though I didn't do anything. And my therapist would watch this happen time and time again. And so in the same way that people would project on me that I was some sort of dangerous person, even though there was nothing I was doing, what would happen is, is instead, in the case of Vosh, what I think is going on is something similar. There's a way in which he's sort of villainized or treated in a particular way that I don't know if it's justified. Has he made mistakes? Has he said dumb? Absolutely. But One of the things that I wanted to just reflect back on before we go over Natalie's thing is our opening to our video about this situation, because one of the Mm -hmm. things that's getting missed in this conversation is we covered this. Oh, yeah, yeah. A lot of people did. And when we covered it, the thing is, is what people don't talk about, including Natalie in her video, as far as I can tell, is the fact that this was around Cat Black essentially engaging in online abuse towards Vosh. 
Mm -hmm. Did Vosh make a spicy comment about race? Sure. Was it appropriate? Probably not. But was it necessary for him to get his judged by her on a public forum and treat him like crap in DMs? Also, no, not at all. To me, and this is what Zian and I came to in that video, was that there was a way in which the behavior of both Contra, who came out in defense of Cat Black, and Cat Black went against their previous content. And so I mm -hmm. wanted to show you the opening to that video, partially because Shalimity did such a great job on it, and partially because it'll refresh your memory. So if you'd like to watch with me, Kisses. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Sometimes people will say one thing and act a completely different way, right? And we're gonna talk about all this different stuff in this video, but one of the things that um, inspired me to make this video is that there have been several people in my personal life in Los Angeles who tout themselves as big advocates for consent, who frame themselves as outspoken, inclusive, you know, inclusive, inclusive rather, feminist people and it turns out that they violate consent it turns out that they are predatory it turns out that they abuse right the status that they get being seen as somebody who can be trusted because of their politics and they are w living in a way that is totally contradictory cancel culture trope three essentialism essentialism is when we go from criticizing a person's actions to criticizing the person themselves we're not just saying they did bad things we're saying they're a bad person but at the end of the day you're dying on a hill for lyrics like i can a baby today, which in 2021, if I'm being completely honest, while that's a grotesque line, it's really not that edgy because it's such an obviously offensive thing to say. But moralism or intellectualism provide a phony pretext for the call out. You can pretend you just want an apology. You can pretend you're just a concerned citizen who wants the person to improve. You can pretend you're simply offering up criticism. I have not been defending the ironic misogyny and people who've been watching me through this drama can attest to that by the way when you produce content online that's going to be viewed by thousands or millions of people there's always some people out there who are going to be hurt by it so if you want to argue that a tweet or a video i made is somehow immoral I think you need more of an argument than just people were hurt. I will say that there is something to be said about the mob mentality of the internet that doesn't leave a lot of room for nuance and really, really loves watching people burn. Personally, I've never really believed in throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Really? I still own and listen to Smith's albums, even though Morrissey is a piece of shit. <laughs> Two hours ago, uh, ContraPoints blocked me on Twitter. You know, I really wish people would pay less attention to the tweets I spend 30 seconds rating and a little more attention to the videos that I spend, you know, hundreds of hours making. And performative activism is all about that. It's about being invested in how it makes you look and not actually being invested in the cause. I'm okay with being criticized for the ironic misogyny, but the way in which the criticism took place made it feel like the left was kind of implicitly ceding ground to J.K. Rowling by agreeing with her and that my behavior sort of warranted her general denunciation of trans people. And that, I think, is a problem. I was getting dragged, and I made the poor decision to try to solve the tweet problem with more tweeting, which 100% of the time is like trying to put out a fire with lighter fluid. So for those asking where that video came from, that's the opening to our video from a year ago about this drama involving Cat Black, Vosh, and Natalie Wynn. Mm -hmm. What does this show? So before we get into any of this drama, we get into any of this stuff, let's be very clear. The behavior that was demonstrated by Cat Black and ContraPoints during this drama was absolutely hypocritical. Now, does hypocritical mean their arguments are bad? No. Everything they said in those clips is good. I agree with it but they did not live to those standards. The issue we have is that in a lot of ways, when we covered this the last time, the problem was is that we didn't give Vosh a pass. Vosh's behavior was still kind of great. Him doing a triggered seven hour stream about this was not great. But the reality was is if I was being attacked, I don't know if I would do any different, especially when people are talking about my job. And as most people pointed out at the time, if this situation was reversed, if Vosh had mm -hmm. pointed about, about her job on Twitter, people would have lost their f minds. Well, and um, it also got leaked that there was between them by cat black right yeah like not that just, was the other part too yeah and that's a really strange one to put on just twitter right like 
I see. Yeah. And I know I see people in chat calling this a slap fight. I actually ask you not to be so reductionist because the reality here is, is that I think that the issue here is that this is a really good example of where people have principles and they don't. Mm -hmm. While Vosh's behavior was not great to me, Vosh stands by his principles, sometimes too far. I've yet to see a time where he really hasn't. When I've looked at the nuance of situations or gone into the depth of them, that's generally what I found. But as far as the women in question, no. What happened back then was kind of against the principles they had done. In fact, Contra's behavior during that time period was essentially in the same vein as the people that had canceled her. Cat Black claiming she's not going to get hot and bothered about a certain tweet or a certain behavior or that you shouldn't throw the baby out with the bathwater doesn't explain the hundreds of tweets about Vosh because she got mad about them DMing when all Vosh was asking in those DMs was to explain his position. And what he got was the woke scold behavior from both of them saying your opinion doesn't matter because you're cis despite the fact that his points were relatively solid. And again, he did not def def defend the ironic misogyny, but more pointed out the fact that this idea that his ironic misogyny somehow seeds ground to turfs in that essentially trans people are misogynistic by nature or somehow essentially is a really bad look. I mean, hell, Cat Black said she literally doesn't give a crap about Vosh, but then she wrote a 10,000 word essay about him. Like, I really need you guys to understand this is that, again, we couldn't actually identify what Cat Black did because it fit to too many categories. The two we majorly nailed it down to in that video of Memory Serves, and recently I watched about half of that video and it was a banger, is mm -hmm. harassment and online sex abuse. Releasing that you sleep with someone without, com without consent is a consent violation. Talking about that person's channels on a public forum when you are a massive content creator is a consent violation. So. Before we go into this, we want to be really clear about what this actually meant. There's a lot of data points that actually get skewed here, and we're going to try to correct them. One I know that's going to come up mm -hmm. in a moment is Natalie's going to claim that Vosh tweeted at JK, JK Rowling. No, Vosh just tweeted. JK Rowling went and hunted that tweet, as far as I know, and then screenshot it. And we'll be looking at some people that went over this as well and gave their thoughts, because again, this is really disappointing. Well, and I got to be clear, um, I know this stuff is from a year ago, but as Natalie's doing this, there's enough off information, but I, I find that particularly disappointing because there was so much coverage of this. It actually really is decently easy to find a variety of pieces to this. It might be hard to put them all in the exact right order, which is important. But um, still, like the information's out there and definitely easily be found and with a little bit of work put in the proper order. Absolutely. And the thing is, is that one of the things we want to cover is we want to talk about this drama a little bit and talk about way the way that Contra's framing it, because it appears, at least based on what we've seen thus far, Contra still doesn't understand what happened. She was so quick to blow off, bl blow Vosh off and literally unironically, I believe used the term mansplaining, mansplaining, which we'll see that in some ways, what this really comes down to is it just seems like people crossing their arms and not listening. As you saw from that clip, Vosh attempted to reach out to DM to try to explain things. If you watch his seven hour stream, he tried to DM Contra mm -hmm. and what he got back was a the attitude. They had been on previously good grounds. She had been on the stream two or three times. In fact, hung out with him and I think Shu on head during a New York, a New, a New Year's stream. It was adorable. It was one of the few times I liked Shu on head. One of few. So you have to understand this is that this was a really weird situation. And the thing is weird is that a lot of the people involved in this team did not remember what actually happened. And yet mm -hmm. we do. Yeah, no, this one hit really, really hard at the time. It was. It was a lot of rough stuff to watch go down. Too clever by half. Yes, absolutely an offense versus harm issue. 110%. Yes. Yeah. Vosh's tweet was offensive. It was not harmful. And the idea that his tweet in any way seeded ground to turf ide ideology is absolutely, I mean, at the best, it's absurd. At the worst, it's repugnant. So let's take a look at some of the things. Oh, I want to be clear, too. On our channel, we're not big on being like, hey, you can't talk about this creator in our community. Like, that's not how we roll. If there's things that you still get from old ContraPoints videos or new ones, cool, watch them. There's stuff that you still get out of Vosh's content. Cool, Cat Black, all right, whatever, you know, watch it. We don't care. I just want to make that clear because, yes, we go over this stuff, but the hope is that you guys get something out of it, is that we can look at this and find, you know, more ways to hopefully apply it to ourselves and, you know, be better in the future and watch out for problematic stuff because it sucks and it hurts a lot of us, you know, either small scale, right? Personal mm -hmm. offense or large scale harm. Well, as we saw from that clip thing, mm -hmm. Contra made banger arguments and probably will make banger arguments in the future. I still think her stuff is worth watching. I haven't watched since this mm -hmm. drama, so I haven't seen the hunger and I've seen this video up until what I need to, because to be honest, I this whole section turned me off. We only have so much time at this point. So also people are talking about how JKR directed turf hate towards gender, Jesse gender. No, this is her deal. 
let me be very clear. Clear. J.K. Rowling is a predator on Twitter. She looks yep. for small tweets. She looks for tweets of creators or small trans trans people, um, and basically proceeds to engage in harassment campaigns against them. And of course, with Elon's new changes that we just talked about in the last segment, that's yeah, that's a thing. Easier, yeah. Well, and one of the things to keep in mind that has been mentioned various points, if you really pay attention to Vosh's stuff, is that there's a lot of times where Vosh is like X is like the decoy target for things, right? So if a lot of the hate and all that jazz is going towards him, well, he's got a big enough platform, a big enough team around him where like it is way easier for him to handle massive harassment campaigns than like tiny ass, the tiniest, um, you know, trans creators just getting their start or something like that, or just random accounts that Rowling finds on Twitter. And so there's been a lot of times over the years where, no, like his platform does kind of act like the decoy. So other people aren't targeted as much for harassment. So Brutus, you said in tweet, Vosh's tweet could pull normie women to turf ideology if you if they used it correctly. I still I still like Vosh, but the tweet was an error. I'm going to disagree. I'm going to say that if you are a uh, progressive woman, cis woman, and you believe trans women are women, then all you're going to see from Vosh's tweet is that Vosh was being misogynistic. Because if you don't believe the Im immediate premise that trans women are, if you don't, if you believe the premise that trans women are women, that tweet's going to have no effect on you. Now, if you are in question or you are already conservative, well, yeah, you're of course going to go for that. Like, again, I just don't see this tweet as that deep. Was it a good idea? Meh. But again, this is an offense versus harm issue. It was offensive. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, let's let's take a look at this this particular part of her video and let's go. To acknowledge that angry trans people on Twitter sometimes take things too far. Things like death threats or misogynistic insults. I don't support that. And I've called it out in the past. Like when the leftists streamer Vosh, drama alert, who is not trans, tweeted at JK Rowling, women be quieter and start apologizing challenge. Notice there's no F. I called him out, tweeting, doing edgy ironic misogyny while defending trans people magnifies the grain of truth in what turfs say about their being. Again, no it doesn't. No it doesn't. How, these don't connect. These logically don't connect. I love when Vivaldi screws up on this. Like, misogyny and trans things. activism. I tweeted right. that because I recognize that if people who are claiming to speak for you are doing so in a misogynistic way, and if you let that slide, you're going to wake up one day to find that you're in a misogynistic movement. Of course. But he wasn't speaking for trans people. He was just talking shit. The two tweets that he sent out were A, that she could have just been quiet and just had her legacy perfect, but she didn't. And that he sent out the misogynistic tweet. These were not directed at her. They were on his page. Also, they were only really quasi to defend the trans community. He was really just attacking JKR. You can say that he did it inappropriately, but again, there's a framing issue here. No, no. Natalie make, has made more offensive jokes in all of her videos. We'll get to it. Of course, Vosh took the criticism really well, explaining that actually, I just didn't understand the complex tactical arguments for the more. Wait, hold on. With respect, the arguments you give in your videos support my position here. And with all the associated context, this site really isn't the best place to speak with nuance. I'm extremely confident you'd agree with me if we were, you were fully caught up. This is literally him extending an olive branch asking to talk to her. Also, he said during this whole drama thing that like, no, like Contras actively has like a way to contact him, like personally. Like, yeah, like like D, like literally like they, they could really just put in DMs just, or well, even just actual like phone numbers. Like they really can just do that. Yeah, what she's saying right now about him him having this complex nuanced strategy, like no, like that's not what's happening. Like like no, that's not what's happening here. She's actively being dishonest here, or she doesn't understand. She's either willfully ignorant or just dishonest. She says, it just strikes me as off that you're extremely confident you definitely know better than a trans woman. Okay, this is Ed Pohl, who's been doing this activism for over a decade, and it's kind of compounds my discomfort with the whole women be quieter tweet. Is that really your argument? That I, by the way of being cis, couldn't possibly be correct in a disagreement on trans issues with a trans person. I was always under the impression that you valid the quality of the argument. This is literally a call to not engage in Ed Pohl. Just because Cat Black is a trans woman does not mean that she is always correct. The hundred tweet thread in which she goes after him and talks about his does not somehow become okay because she's a trans woman also i'm pretty sure there's some pieces missing between everything like alpha not i don't know why you're asking that you're asking okay the misogyny is still shit though right are you not paying attention seriously i don't understand what you're doing right now the reality is, is that like no one has defended the misogyny other than I said, I don't think it's that particularly that deep. So I feel like I, I, I don't know if this is like a willful ignorance thing on your part, but like, yeah, just no, no one is saying that the misogyny is good. 
What we're saying is, is that the idea that Contra saying here that it seeds ground to turfs is nonsense. Or that it warranted such a massive reaction, you know, later kind of thing. And also notice there's no mention of Cat Black here. She specifically took these tweets out, out, of, out of the context without any mention of Cat Black. This feels like a bitch eating crackers moment for Contra that is having about Vosh. Yeah, it feels like a Lily argument, doesn't it? For all those who have watched our videos, does this not feel like Lily? Jesus Christ, Lily Orchard makes better arguments than this. All right, let's keep going. This is not that long of a clip. That actually, I just didn't understand the complex tactical arguments for the moral necessity of being misogynistic. Co okay, that is clearly a hyperbolic title. Was it a good idea? Meh. But again, this is how you draw people in. At the time of this video, it's got a 191 thousand views yeah again this is just hyperbole everyone names their videos this kind of crap i don't understand dj mule literally named his video like essentially that xander hall was a, still an alt writer like again this is really strange jk rowling and then he accused me of cancel culturing him while at the same time literally telling his followers to publicly shame me the more of you were in the replies being like that's not what's happening right here like this is necessary okay publicly shame her into changing her mind on this. Then bring so let's be very clear. What she's doing right now is publicly shaming. She's just being dodgy about it. Yep. Like for a woman who put out a video on justice, like this is not a rehabilitative of justice. If this is literally just condemnation, re retributive justice stuff. I don't even remember Vosh's original like statements there being that deep. I like, think that got walked back at some point. Telling someone to be in someone's replies and like shaming. Was it a great idea? No. Well, it wasn't even just like the full thing was, was shaming her into like changing her mind, wasn't it? Like yeah, yeah. That's not, that's not quite the same as making like an entire video. I don't even know why it would matter. She deletes half of her tweets. She wouldn't even get the notifications after that. She deletes almost all of them. What are we doing? Like, again, like, yeah, I yeah. feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Yeah, this is really, really weird. Bringing up my past struggle with addiction. Move you off this site and into, I don't want to bring up the substance abuse. So that pretty much. Wait, he just said he didn't want to. And again, no, no, look at the tweet. This is where this is. Because it's maddening to watch you pose as the savior of transgenders. That's not what he did. Then do edgy misogyny in the name of that. Again, he was just being misogynistic. That wasn't in the name of. And finally, melt down when a trans woman who knows more than you about this criticizes you. Again, arguably, I don't actually know if that's true about Cat Black. I actually think Vosh's sociology degree and the amount of stuff in his research document shows he probably knows more. Also, right here, is this not verbatim what woke scold types said to you, referring to when she was canceled? Almost down pinpoint, the people who drove you off this site, and he says, to the point of addiction, and then decides not to post that, that that would be rude. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he super clarifies it. Like, no, that's... Again, that was... The addiction thing was public information already. Like, it was well known already because she talked about it in her own video youtuber right. user remaining anonymous says does Nat natalie not talk to a therapist to process emotions offline i feel like this is terminally online stuff yeah like this is this is so dishonest even her tweet to him responding here was triggered and dishonest as hell this site and into I don't want to bring up the substance abuse. So that pretty much confirmed to me that Vosh doesn't actually care about advocating for trans people and just uses trans rights as a pretext to act like a fucking dingus. I won't tell you- I hate this so much. I really do. I want to be really clear. You can dislike Vosh, you can hate him. You can think he's terrible. But let me be really clear. Natalie, you're an idiot. The reality is, is that like, there is no way in hell that Vosh's community is not trans friendly and that he has not fought for trans rights. He has debated numerous people on trans issues. He is con like right now, if you look over here, Missouri asked you to report your trans neighbors. He's literally streaming right now about trans issues. Not heavy streaming because he's probably eating viewers from us, but you know, I'm living with it. But again, with like thing that I, I appreciate about Bosch is that no matter how many trans people go after him or really, really have a hate for him, he's still doing trans positive work and still advocating and still talking about these issues. That's true. The largest Vosh critique I can give is that he's not subbed to us or Sage. Fair. Yeah. The idea that he doesn't actually care about trans rights. I think this is this is utter cope. This is just projection. No, no. There was a thread that was cataloged. That was there's another large YouTuber YouTube account in the last year, six months. And they had asked. Oh, the Twitter you know, account. Yeah. The one that asked the one that was like the trans one that asked, hey, you know, why do you why do people watch Vosh? And then a whole bunch of people set, signed up and then the person deleted their like yeah. started blocking. And it people. was and I think beyond safe words had actually saved it, too. But it was trans person after trans person after trans person, like saying positive things that they had gotten out of this, you know, out of their experience, either in, you know, the community or from watching Vosh. Right. And even Poppy and I have been like, no, like if we have, you know, people in our community who are like, how do I talk to my, you know, relatives about trans issues when they're really not for it? We're like, well, 
here's some good wash videos that will give you some ideas or give you some ground to kind of start thinking about how to do this. Like that's no, there's a lot of utility there. Also, like, I want to be really clear about something like if Vosh didn't really care about trans rights, I just want to step out of the, the segment part and just go to the se- stream real quick. If Vosh didn't care about trans rights because we're going to go by behavior, then he wouldn't have listened to Doe or us. So I know for a fact Vosh sees our streams or at least our videos. I know this because he's mentioned it in a D- in, in, U- in, in uh, email to me when I sent him the uh, Jesse Gender video about Hogwarts Legacy because I wanted him to check it out because I thought our arguments there were sound as hell. First off, squee. That's neat. Moving Mm -hmm. on, the other part of this is, is that at least to some degree, I know around the same time that when he came out against neo pronouns and xenogenders, I know he spoke to Doe and I know he spoke to I know I I have feeling he saw our video about it. I can't prove that, obviously. That is my belief. But all of a sudden his position changed and he was no longer that hard on it. Mm -hmm. If he really was just some talentless grifter who didn't give a crap about trans issues, why did he change his mind? Right. Well, and this is I've mentioned in those videos, too. This is one of the things that I like seeing somebody who can actually like process and work through, you know, their thoughts on queer topics. We have a lot of people in the queer community already who have a difficult time with some of the more advanced concepts or don't fully understand, you know, xenogenders or something, right? Like, no, we've actively seen Bosch Bosch work to change on that front. Not to mention the fact that like numerous trans people have made videos against Bosch and like he still is defending us. Like if he really didn't care, why would he just keep doing it? Like I just find that like this, this attitude is so beneath Natalie. It doesn't make sense. Well, and the strange part is, is like Natalie will mention this, but again, in the last couple of years or the last, not sorry, not a couple of years, last few months or two, when Natalie comes up, Bosch makes it seem more of like a personal issue and still says, no, it's worth it to go watch her videos. Go watch them. Like, that says a lot to me. And then this comes out. But again, like, I don't understand why this is like, this comes off this way. So let's keep going. Let's get through this clip. And then we'll kind of get on with this. Mm-hmm. I need to publicly shame him, though, because unlike Vosh, I would never sink to that. The- There's a really great um, iDubs video talking about how you don't do the insult, even though you're doing the insult. This is literally what Natalie's doing. The anti-insult is great. It's for people who want to make sort of crude remarks in their online videos, but don't really want any backlash. You do the anti-insult and you'll win every time. Driving a car, the Minecraft logo in the corner, his teeth. Nah, that. I'm not going to be talking about the kid today. Nah, I'm not going to be talking about the kid today after showing a picture of his up snaggletooth to my millions of followers. A zoomed in picture of his up snaggletooth. Yeah, no, I'm not going to be talking about the kid today. I'm not going to talk about his up teeth. His teeth? The f- thing in his mouth? I'm not gonna talk about that. That would be a f***ed up thing for me to do. These things? Not gonna do it. Not gonna talk about those f***ed up nasty things. The point I'm trying to make is I have no qualms about calling out people on my side whenever they go too far or cross a line. Me too. Literally what we're doing with you right now, Natalie. You were the reason why I felt comfortable enough transitioning and I'm calling you out right now. It goes both ways, sweetheart. Or do stupid tweets and then mansplain to me about how I don't understand tactical misogyny. First off, no one called it tactical misogyny. Second off, man, you're using mansplaining on Iraq. What? What is this, a BuzzFeed article from 2012? Did, did you hit your head? But the same cannot be said of JK Rowling. I mean, she probably hit her head, but moving on. So as you can see, this isn't a great look. And one of the big problems with this is, is that there are a lot of takes on this. Let's take a look at them. First off, so one of the big problems some people on Twitter had with this is that the issue was that Natalie's thesis to this whole thing, people were saying, oh, she's not just saying block JK Rowling. Okay, well, let's listen to what she says. Kadama says, holy sh**, can we stop infantilizing women who are political figures? Women have their own minds and they can make their own decisions. They don't need a man to explain to think for them. Both the left and right do this. It's gross. Let's check out what she says. So... I would advise trans people and our allies to keep in mind that J.K. Rowling is not the final boss of transphobia. She's not our devil. The devil is the Republican Party, the conservative party. The devil is patriarchy. It's the right-wing men who will be the ones to put gender-critical theory into brutal practice. Anita Bryant, Posey Parker, and J.K. Rowling are, to borrow a term from TERFs, handmaidens. TERFs are the real handmaidens. They're useful idiots who put a concerned female face on the patriarchal violence against trans people that will ultimately be enacted by right-wing men. So I would advise trans people and our allies to keep in mind So real quick, this is infantilizing as hell. It's interesting because Natalie goes after Vosh about like misogyny when this is a misogynistic take. Oh, J.K. Rowling, Posey Parker, they don't they don't have they're just useful idiots to patriarchy. 
No, no, they're David Duke. They're leaders of a hate movement. They are doing exactly what they said they're doing. The idea. Well, it's a really childish version of like feminist feminism, too. Oh, no, it's you're right. Lava monster. It feels very it pole. No, it's super it pole. Like this idea that, OK, we're all women and we all, you know, have experienced sexism or bigotry, or whatever else. And that means that we're all connected and we're all more likely to be sympathetic to each other and, you know, care about each other and not do mean things. Like, no, it's a really, really childish version of feminism. Not to mention the fact that it also ignores the causality directionality. Yep. Like, so here's the issue is that conservatives went to TERFs and made allies because TERFs could give them weapons against trans people. It wasn't the other way around. TERFs just went out and did their thing and conservatives went to them. It wasn't that the conservatives created these movements or, you know, necessarily like immediately were manipulative. Are they manipulative of them? Sure. But that's because they're the same thing. These women are Nazis. They are fascists. They want an entire group eradicated. The idea that they don't have their own autonomy, that they aren't actually like doing these things of their own is insane. This is what Kadama's talking about. Holy shit, can we stop infantilizing women who are political figures? What she is talking about is in JK Rowling and Posey Parker. These women are monsters yep. that want us dead. JK Rowling, because she didn't transition when she was younger and because she certainly because she's blaming her assault on us. And Posey Parker, because I'm pretty sure she's just a Nazi. And again, to my understanding, this is a massively, are we going to get to the U.S. centric take yet? It's massively like U.S. centric. Oh, here's me being an asshole. Uh, weird how it was Lily Orchard's video on ContraPoints that led me to Vosh. And now ContraPoints' new video is doing a Lily Orchard tier argument against Vosh. Right, right. Oops, all gaslighting. To my understanding, Rowling is having an effect on politics, but pr primarily UK politics, right? Like to make her out to be nothing is really misguided. And I'm really, really done with people, particularly essayists, if we just saw philosophy tube did do this too, confusing US for other parts of the world. I know a lot of us are in the US, but that doesn't mean that everything is based around us. Yeah, yeah. Especially the fact that like JK Rowling is maybe just an irrit irritant to us in the US. But literally, UK policy is being built on the things she says. Like, she has real political effects. Are you people on drugs? Like, yeah, yeah, like, Posey Parker's a tradcath Nazi. True. Also, this is what Natalie said. A lot of people are interpreting my ending of the video with just block her as a statement that no other action is required. Obviously, I don't think that. As I devoted more hours to the of the video to JKR than any other topic. I, person I personally am just done with her, and I don't see the value in engaging with her directly, but I'm broadly supportive of protests and boycotts. We'll get back to that in one in a minute. My response to this was, love, you basically framed her as an evil woman and to be ignored. So the idea of just block her felt the like the implicit conclusion. JK is a f***ing existential threat helping make UK law. Blocking her does nothing in my opinion. And this is a, a large, you know, YouTube account making an over arcing statement about what to what action to take right like that's the weird part like i don't care if people individually want to block her like yeah no by all means take care of your mental health here also matt wolf matthew wolf making a, fu a fantastic point if you sit around speak is saying you you speak for trans people and make misogynistic jokes one day you'll wake up and you'll be surrounded by it contrapoints also contrapoints yeah do you remember Rhea, do you remember the Nazi character that she used to have? Oh, excuse me, the liber what was it? The the liberal identitarian. She's made more edgy jokes than that. Hell, her entire joke was literally like, like what was it? Her turf character coming in and basically saying, um, "Do you think being a woman is just having high, you know wearing high heels and wearing pretty nails?" And her response was, "Mm hmm." Going even further, here's White Nervosa breaking some stuff down. Love me some White Nervosa and some Lumi. Mm hmm. This is hurtful with that framing. Vosh wasn't given a critique. Contra made him the prime example and said he only uses support for trans issues as a vehicle for misogyny. He attacked her for being an addict and he directed harassment towards her. All of these, all of those she knows are wrong. And the person whining here about, well, he did say his viewer, viewers to go publicly shame her. Publicly shaming is exactly what she's doing here. If we're going to throw blow for blow, it's equivalent. And by the way, this was a response to Brianna Wu. Brianna Wu even said, I'm not getting involved in that part. Ha ha. Yeah. yeah. Dream leaf um, with the based contra be like JK Rowling is blocked. The evil is defeated again. The, the, the basic thing that this video came to was that essentially Vosh is bad and a misogynist and doesn't really actually care about trans people. And I just don't think there's evidence to support this. Even if I try to be take the most like terrible framing I can towards the man, it just doesn't stand up in any kind of real way. The problem is, is that Contra is a really good content creator. She writes really good stuff. Envy is still one of my favorite videos of all time. But this video is not worthy of her.
The connection between J.K. Rowling and Native Riot is indeed brilliant, but the conclusion she comes to is lacking. It's soft. It's meaningless. It feels like liberal nonsense. And it has included so much id poll where you're basically sort of infantilizing these women and saying they're not really behind the evil they do. It's really just the men in patriarchy. No, these women are absolutely aware of what they're doing. They are aware of it and doing it. Contra is unironically being misogynistic to J.K. Rowling and Posey Parker. And I can't believe I'm saying that because I hate those people. Yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it's a thing. The thing I really want people to understand from this, and this is something ZZ and I have been talking about since this happened, is, again, you guys don't have to like any content creator. You don't have to, in any way, like the people we like or agree with us on our takes. We want open dialogue about people. But again, if you want to argue with us, you need to come to bang. You need to actually suggest why there's a problem. Do I think that Vosh has problematic takes? Some, yeah. Do I think that he's done dumb in the past? Absolutely. But if you're going to come at me about like the Sansal thing about him somehow being a stochastic terrorist or somehow that he is a he's a he's a grifter who doesn't actually care about trans rights. Hyena is which, by the way, base name because I'm a hyena, too. But hyena, his ex and like literally one of the major mods running his discord and his channel is a non-binary person. His major editor, Tempest, is a trans man. I saw someone in chat earlier ask, like, do you think the, the Vosh allegations about being a chaser are true? No, not every guy that likes trans women is a chaser. You need to come with more to bang. You need evidence. You need some kind of actual tweets or DMs or something that actively showed like him being overly fetishistic towards trans girls. I know he's talked about it in the past, but like these all feel performative. They don't feel like him actively hyper fixating also oh, no, conyers is flat made in trans femme true right i don't know vosh has actively gone on blog segments about like sex education and, and consent and everything it just talks about everything like still like there's not really isn't data for this stuff you know like we really need better arguments i think the overall thing i want to say is that like there are people that are going to look at this video, they're going to get mad, they're going to get upset, they're going to be real pissy, because the reality is, is that they're going to be really parasocial towards Contra, and for those people, she can do no wrong, and for other people, their parasociality goes the negative direction, and she can do no right. I reject all of you. It's <laughs> like, okay to take a nuanced view and be like, these things are positive, these things are negative. It's okay. All are punished, as far as I'm concerned, because neither of these perspectives is useful. In my opinion, the reality is, is that Natalie makes good videos, but this is not one of them. There are some good insights in this video, but they are not ones that actually meaningfully engage with a real outcome, not like envy or not like, say, gender critical or not like, say, canceling. These have real meaningful outcomes that are incredibly important to the left. This has no value. Its conclusion is half baked. And this entire segue into Vosh is just it's just woke school nonsense. It's equivalent mm -hmm. to what DJ Mule did to Xander Hall. It's the equivalent of what Lily did to Natalie. It's the same kind of utter clip chimping and, uh, and just complete misframing of the situation that Vosh gets constantly and that people did to Natalie as well. Well, and to top it all off, it's just a detour from points that could actually be useful, right? This is just holding on to year old drama that frankly could have been solved on a personal level anyways, you know, to... Just splice it into a video about Rawling? Like, I don't really even see the comparison between, like, the point in putting Bosch and Rawling in the same video. That doesn't even track in the first place. I guess or at least the same video for this point, right? Like... The other thing about this video that really bothers me is that, in some ways, one of the things it does that I don't really like very much is that it ignores one of the actors here. Yep. Cat Black proceeded to do a 100-tweet thread about how... Vosh something something DMs. Vosh went over those DMs. He was perfectly respectful to her and she kept being incredibly rude. And then she posted this all publicly and proceeded to make jokes about his dick. Again, this is a violation of consent. I'm not playing. I'm not. You guys have looked at our previous videos. Go watch our transmisogyny videos. We have stated previously during the bimbo politics stuff and other issues with trans women that we are very hesitant to ever make claims such as these types towards trans women, because it's so easy for any of us to be trans misogynistic in pl internally and assume these things about trans women. There is a way that we are sort of all pre-programmed to assume that trans women are predators because that's the overarching narrative that's been given for the entirety of our existence for the last 30 years. So when I say that I think Cat Black did a form of online abuse or some sort of meaningful kind of 
harassment, that should have weight because I don't want to say that. There's a hesitancy because I don't want in any way, shape or form to say this about a trans woman. But again, no one should do this to each other. And again, if the roles were reversed, mm -hmm. people would have gone after Bosch. I don't know what's going on with SES, but this is getting weird. I want to be really clear here. Like, I still like Natalie Wynn. I still think she's done an amazing job bringing people over from the right. I still want people to find her and I still want her to bring people over. I don't have like this incredibly like mm -hmm. gut wrenching dislike of her. It's not anything like that. I still like Natalie. Well, a lot of her, her old videos are still really great at talking about like queer theory. Queer theory or really good dialogues between characters about like very real things like performativity theory. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, is that like this feels very beneath her. I genuinely thought she was better than this. And I remember Vosh saying something when he covered this stuff, and it was something to the effect of like, this makes me wonder about her previous work. And it does kind of make me wonder about some of the framings and other things, because not that I want to go down that road and I probably won't, but it does make me wonder, like, Natalie, what were you thinking when you wrote this? Why did you shove this in here? Ghostly blurry face, please don't say things like that in chat. I will mute you again, dear. Again, I just want to be really clear about this is that I am not defending Vosh's ironic misogyny, neither is Xena. We are not saying what he did was good or right. But if you are going to, in some way, portray this, you need to do so accurately. Right. One of the big things is that actually figuring out what level of offense or harm was actually done so there can be a, an appropriate response of the same level. Someone said in chat, oh, Alian, I like Abigail. You're allowed to like Abigail. Go watch Abigail's videos, you're fine. Yeah, we started this video going. No, really, you can keep liking whoever you want. If you get something out of the videos from people, cool, take what you can get. And there's multiple reasons to watch videos. Sometimes you watch videos, you know, to learn something new. Sometimes you watch it to figure out what the other side is talking about so you can understand how to tackle those arguments better. Sometimes there's maybe you just like how the editing is. Whatever, you just like the beginning song. It's fine. Like whoever you want. Um, yeah, we just have contentions with certain people. My contention with Natalie is that this was inappropriate. And mm -hmm. my contention with a Abigail Thorne is that she said gender dysphoria isn't real and she's subjectively incorrect. I feel like this is about what I've got on this topic. Yeah, what I feel doing? pretty done. I feel like this is the thing, like, again, people probably want us to go off harder on this. I just don't have the energy because I'm just sad. Yeah, and this I is especially tiring, exhausting to go through stuff like this. I really wanted, yeah, but... Again, this is just disappointing. And again, I'm not saying people need to be mean or anything about it, but it just doesn't feel like Natalie really stands by this even herself. The tweet we showed earlier, mm -hmm. um, this one right here, she deleted like all of them. And so, yeah, I just I don't know. I'm just really sad about the whole thing. And I wish she would have done different. So <sighs> maybe yeah, there'll be more on this here. later. But, you know, yeah, I just wish that she would have been more thoughtful and more charitable because I think Vosh has done enough. Not to mention the huge amount of uh, huge amounts of money he's raised for decent, you know, various charities to deserve like at least the opportunity to make his case. But Even that, or just focus on the targets that really need to be focused on. Yeah, I feel like that video really distracts from that point. Yeah. So yeah, with uh, with that said, we will see you guys in the next one. Next time on Dragon Ball Z. Cat Black writes a 20,000 word essay about why she doesn't care about Bosch.